lay it all down Put your face into my neck and let it fall out Cause I know, I know, I know My name is Amy and I'm 24. I I uh, grew up with my mother who had bipolar. She had episodes of six months of depression and then every 10 years or so she has a psychotic episode. And for me, I almost became the mother figure in the household when my mother was like that. So this here is a picture of my mother, about the same age as me. This was taken when she first met my father. Yeah, this picture means a lot to me. I've been very aware of mental health and how it affects not only the person that is going through it but their family. So I suppose finding out myself that I was bipolar when I was eventually diagnosed hit me like a ton of bricks to think well is this what my life's going to be like. But I will learn to breathe this you see. I was diagnosed shortly after a manic episode. A lot of um, late nights partying, a lot of promiscuity and things that aren't normally me and then becoming a mother as a consequence of my illness. Together we will rise out of our night minds and into the light at the end of the fight. A comment that was made only recently to me in that the best way for us to manage mental health would be to stop mental health patients from, from having children. And to have someone say to me, or, or say about me, that I shouldn't be allowed to do that, is just, it's wrong. So to people like that that think that we shouldn't be allowed to have children, I would just say, well, I do have bipolar, but I'm managing it. I take my medication, I see my counsellor, and why shouldn't I be allowed to have a normal life? I want my child to grow up in a world where mental health is accepted as it is. I'm Amy, who just happens to have bipolar. And I don't want my child to feel that their mother is indifferent, rather that they see that, yes, mum, mummy does have bipolar, but she, she controls it through medication, counselling. I've got a great like, network of friends and obviously a family that's very exposed to the illness and therefore knows how to, to deal with the illness. With the behaviour of, of bipolar, you have obviously the lows where you're depressed and in some ways you can sort of hide in your bedroom for, for the months on end. But when you have the manic episodes, that is when you're really out there and when you're in a regional city like Dubbo, you really are only given one chance at your reputation. My mum, she was in hospital for two months. I remember going to school one day and I got a boy that I went to school with, his mother actually worked in the hospital where my mother was. And he said to me, your mum's a psycho. And I remember just thinking how cruel that was. And I was only eight or nine. But to think that, how could someone say that about my mum? This picture here is of me at age nine. This was the age when my mother went through one of her psychotic episodes. Looking at this image, this young and very innocent girl being subjected to those kinds of comments about her mother. It was a very scarring event. I have to remember that the, that the person that said those things was also only a child and was speaking from a, an attitude that was probably reflected from their parents. And you were blessed by a different kind of interview. I don't want my child to grow up in a society where I'm related to as a psycho. There should be an education there for everyone that if someone says I'm bipolar, it's okay. So that means that certain times of the year you're depressed, and certain times of the year you're extra happy and leave it at that. And the highs will make you blind, but the lows make you want to die. And... I used to think, well, I need to be grateful to the friends that I've got and 
whoever's going to give me five minutes of their, of their time, I want to take that. But now I just surround myself around the fair income people, the people that really are there to understand me and appreciate me and, and, and that won't cast aspersions or prejudice against me because of this illness. Because I'm still learning a lot about my illness now, the biggest thing that I need to be aware of is the signals and the triggers and my friends are aware of those now too and it's gotten to the point where they even say to me how are you feeling after this happened or I've noticed you're spending a little bit more money than you normally would, is everything okay? And it makes me accountable to them. It's like if I was a diabetic, you know, you've got to be aware of your sugar levels and make sure you're taking your insulin when you need to be taking it. So it's a responsibility to yourself and to those around you. And that's why if I am responsible, I should, should not be made feel that I have to live a life anything less than normal. But I will learn to breathe this ugliness you see so we can both be It's only one one hundredth of me. There's still so much more of me that I have to give. This is my new challenge to not let my illness overcome me and to not become consumed by it, is to focus on this picture and this is my baby and my new reason for, for living. And in our honesty, together we will rise out of our night minds. At the end of the fight